Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be tuning into episode nine of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Tonchi Prusat and with me as he is week in, week out, Josip Zilic. Good evening, Josip. Welcome to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Good evening, Tonch. Thanks for having me and welcome to all our viewers this week. Uh, we're looking forward to a, a big show once again as we get the privilege to talk with uh, people around the country. And uh, tonight we connect with the furthest state uh, in, in the country, the furthest capital city in the country and the most isolated city in the uh, capital city in the world, in Perth, with Western Knights coming on board. Yeah, no, it's um, it's. I mean, it's 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 going to be awesome. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Um, we've we've covered so so many clubs, um, Croatian community clubs over the last uh, well, it's now two and a bit months, nine uh, nine weeks to be exact, and and the list of uh, who's who includes Gorse Beach Bears, O'Connor Knights, Gold Coast Knights, Zagreb Hurstville, St Albans Dynamo, Strathmore Split. Last week's episode was a beauty, wasn't it? Newcastle, Croatia, a club that's just um, resurrected itself after a hiatus of about, what, 30 years? Um, yep. and, and a club very close to your heart as well. That's right. And uh, look, the, the feedback I got from the guys is they really enjoyed the uh, the coverage and the, the mentions we give them. It, it helps propel their image across their, their great city of uh, Newcastle. And uh, as we've heard from the people on, on the show, um, uh, last week with Carl uh, explaining um, how, and also Luca explaining how the Newcastle Herald is going to be giving them an, an expose within a massive publication like mm. that. So it's wonderful to see. Brilliant. Um, uh, welcome to all of our viewers across the YouTube and Facebook platforms. Welcome to anyone joining us for the first time. We really appreciate your uh, presence here tonight, and we certainly hope that it won't be your first and last time tuning into the Oz Crow Soccer Show. We've got some awesome episodes coming up over the next few weeks. Um, we will say now, next week, we've got St. Albans Dynamo back on. They are the second club to feature, uh, or will be the second club to feature in our um, weekly Club in Focus segment. They've got a huge game um, next uh, Sunday week up against the Melbourne Knights, the big Croatian derby. Um, also, we'll be having someone from the Knights in coming weeks, Josip, to talk about something that's, uh, that we basically um, mentioned in last week's episode, didn't we? Yeah, so um, we'll be speaking with a member of the Melbourne Knights junior setup uh, regarding uh, Joe Šimunić and Peter Krippan uh, setting up that talent ID and academy uh, system for the Melbourne Knights juniors, and it's wonderful to see something like that eventuating. Mm. As we know, we often speak about the pathway not being right and somewhat broken, for want of a better term. Um, so clubs, you've got to dig in and and set up, set yourselves up, and if you want to give your juniors a chance in life and propel them onto the world stage, well, go ahead and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you and Josip Šimunić, you mentioned you mentioned Josip Šimunić. He was our second guest on our uh, on our, or on our on our second episode. He was our guest. Um, and if you've missed any of our shows up until now, there's the uh, Oz Crow Soccer Channel uh, our YouTube. Go um, click on 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 that. Or, well, actually, it's not a link there, but um, nonetheless, go to the YouTube. But if you look um, up Oz Crow Soccer Show on YouTube, show, you'll hit us. You'll find our channel. Yeah. Yep, we've got yep. all of our past episodes. We've got some great interviews there as well. Um, and do do yourself a favour and make sure you you, you log in to that. Um, it is a it is an opportunity to really. Um, um, yeah, catch up on that, what you've missed. But uh, look, last week was a brilliant show, um, Josip, because not only did we have, obviously, Newcastle, Croatia, but um, we had two gentlemen um, from from Geelong who are now doing it well in Europe, um, but they had some really, really good words of advice for any young footballer wanting to make it big. Yeah, look, the, the, the theme of their conversation is what we also heard from young Marco, Marco Bulic a few weeks prior to that. You know, it's about putting the sacrifices, uh, going through the sacrifices, putting the extra effort in and, and just keep doing the one percenters that the coaches want to see. Um, and you'll, you'll, if you've got the passion desire, you'll get yourself in a position where you can be selected for opportunities like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we have actually got a, um, a little bit of a snippet from that show last week. It um, goes for about 60 seconds, but in it, the boys talk very, very candidly about, I guess, some of the sacrifices that they've had to make and have to make to be, make a good time. Listen to this, folks. Really good words of advice.
fighters you've had to make to, you to be able to get to where you are? Well, first of all, there's a lot of sacrifice you have to make. Um, just small, small ones like not going to parties or you know resting on a Friday night, night before a game. Um, obviously, eating healthy, drinking healthy, but you can't you can't go out every party and stuff because you've got to make these small sacrifices. You know, you have training during the week, you get a big game on the weekend. Also, sacrifice, for example, now going overseas, moving to a different country with our family. It's just, it's hard sometimes, but at the end of the day, um, I'm here to play football, and that's obviously a part of it. Making a lot of sacrifices. So, I'd say that I'd say that's the biggest sacrifice by far. Obviously, putting behind everything that we know, going to a new country with a different culture, everything's so different. You know, just putting everything behind, and just challenging yourself to see how far you can go. See how far you can go. I don't know if we've lost Tunchy there. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll Here solve that. <laughs> but yeah, over to you, mate. Straight to the news desk. No worries, mate. Thank you very much, and we'll, we'll dive straight into Western Australia, mate. I know we're going to be speaking with uh, Western Knights a little bit later in the show, but uh, just a quick uh, cover off of Gwelop Croatia, who's approaching the kickoff for their NPL campaign this week against Perth Red Star, uh, which was formerly Jundalup and had a merge with uh, another team there. I uh, can't remember the other name of the club, but um, yeah, they're off to Jundalup Stadium on Saturday at 3 p.m. So uh, good luck to Gwelop as they kick off. Uh, I hope the form turns around from their preseason and they find winning ways again. Over to South Australia, Adelaide Croatia continue their winning form with a nice 2-1 win over Port Adelaide. Uh, I think the one of the highlights uh, that came out this week, and he's starting to eventuate uh, week on week now with Adelaide Croatia, and something that uh, we, we all enjoy seeing is a young man who's been at the club since he was six years old, the young Luka Jovanovic. There's, there's a clear strategy here, Adelaide Croatia. It's terrific to see, Tonch. Uh, yeah. and, and during the week, we saw Adelaide Croatia announce their academy program. Right uh, now, I've had the privilege of being part of North Geelong for a long time. Uh, we've had to do three resets in 12 years when it's come to just tweaking the way you do uh, your junior program and and making sure that it all links together from end to end. Um, it's it's not an easy thing to do. It's a brave decision to make. I congratulate Adelaide Croatia for what they've done, and for every club out there that's looking to do similar things. Um, if you if you want any advice or tips, reach out to the community of the Croatian clubs. We, a lot of us have been through it. You know, this, this, the long, the long-term clubs like Adelaide Croatia, the oldest Croatian club uh, in Australia, uh, Melbourne Knights, uh, Sydney United, North Geelong. Many of us, we, uh, many of us have been through it. And if you're thinking about doing it and you want, you want to approach that pathway, reach out to your network. We're, people like myself and, and others around the country are available, and we, we're we're glad and delighted to share the information that we whatever we can offer. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point that you make, Josip, and, and, and yourself, you've been on, on the um, Sarves Committee, the uh, Croatian Australian Soccer Association, as have I. And uh, apart from the um, player connection with Croatia that you've, you've, we've always tried to sort of um, uh, massage or try to develop, there's also the coaching element as well. Um, and in that comes also now the structure of the way clubs are run. And, yeah. um, and look, the academy program. I mean, we're going to see that with um, with uh, with Josip Shimunic and Petar Kirpan, ex um, Vatreni member. Uh, there's that coaching um, uh, exchange, if you like, as well. But yeah, you touch on, yeah, but you touch on a really good point, and and I think this is something we've explored here at the Oscro Soccer Show in past episodes. How we structure our organisations, how we structure our our, our clubs. Um, some, like um, Strathmore Split, operate without a president and they've yeah. got a couple of subcommittees that are kind of aligned in that way. It works for them. Now, for other clubs, and, and look, Adelaide Raiders, Adelaide Croatia, St Albans Dinamo, um, I think there's Gold Coast Knights as well, they now start to develop academy-style programs alongside their normal junior programs and this and that. 
Um, it's an interesting thing. I, I, I reckon we should devote one one whole show to one uh, upcoming thing because there's so much to talk about. Just and one? Just one, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe a series of shows. Look, I, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear what the comments, um, people in the comments section think as well. You know, is it purely just the name? Are we just talking academies for just a junior program? Um, because we see a lot of that happening, particularly in Sydney, particularly in Melbourne, um, a lot of private schools, private providers as well. Um, but, yeah, something during the week I was really interested. Yeah. Um, a, a, a young Australian-Croatian chap by the name of Josip Wonchadic, who's who runs a school-based academy, Kilo, yeah. uh, Kilo Downs Kilo College. Downs. Yeah. yeah, and he I, he put something up. I might have been on LinkedIn about a NPL coach who was uh, punishing the kids by yeah. making them do yeah. r- run laps and things like that. And I thought, well, I want to bring this up. I, w- I really want to bring this up. Academy programs and the NPL programs, they're, they're programs there to develop the players. Um, yeah. Now, we're not we're saying you should always be warm and fluffy and fuzzy and what you're not, but punishing them for not performing, doesn't that sort of be counterproductive to the whole ethos of what we're trying to do with these players? What are your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, look, my, my, my thoughts say, look, there, there, there can be a time when a, ca- when a coach can show the frustration because of um, non-compliance to team ethics and team team rules, right? Yeah. Um, but to, to, tell, to hear a story where a team has lost, you know, whatever it be, whether it be 1-0 or 5-0, is there a... Is regard irrespective of what the words that came out of that coach's mouth to the kid, you you need to take the the fact that you're you're an educator, you're in a, mm. you're in a privileged position to teach technical and discipline. Um, you now have to impart that knowledge onto onto a group of people who hopefully continue to love the sport and grow with the sport. And you you have a small minute window of time with these people. Now, it, you might spend one season, two seasons, three seasons with them, but when these people become adults, will they continue to love the game or will they look look back at that time and say, gee, that coach was you know, particularly hard and, and made me fall out of love with the game. I, I wish that I had someone that could nurture me because I had, I believe I had the skills and the fitness and the desire to do it all, mm. but I just needed that encouragement to push me and propel me. I'm not, like you said, don't, don't need to cotton wool it. Yeah. These ways of being straightforward without being cruel. Yeah. Now we, we talked about the NPL program. We talked about academies, and and I guess it's triggered by the fact that Adelaide um, Adelaide uh, Raiders have created an academy, which I'd love to hear more about it. So hopefully yeah. we might be able to get um, Adelaide Croatia on the program. Um, I hear St Albans's program is doing really well, and it, look, those kids that are really talented that are wanting to go that elite pathway because um you know, I, I see even kids in um, um you know in the NPL program there are kids that maybe don't belong there maybe their parents have pushed them maybe they just don't have that mm, to make it at that level but there are kids at, as at well that, that are at that time Tunch, at that time and and that I've maybe, seen, yeah go I've on. seen many a kid come through at under thir- under 13 under 14 and, limit, yeah. and then you hear that those barbs over the fence because their kid might be a 13, 14, a, a wonderful player and balanced and technically gifted. But sometimes it takes the kid to get to 15, 16s and, and 18s to, to put it all together from a coordination perspective. Kids mature differently physically. Yeah. Some some takes longer mentally. But you've mm. got to connect it all connect all the dots together to put the whole package together. Well, we're going to explore more in depth what these academy setups are like. Do they provide more of a um, a holistic approach to the football development? Are they just an extension of the NPL programs already at some of these clubs? I'll be I'm, I'll be very intrigued to find out, and I'm yeah. sure a lot of viewers and, and will be as well. So um, we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. Let's get on with the rest let's of the news. There's so much continue. to get on with, yeah. Let's continue to the Apple Isle, mate. Glenorchy Knights are fast approaching there, round one, mate. This Saturday, taking on Riverside Olympic at home on Sunday. and uh, uh, This Saturday, sorry. And on Sunday, the Knights women in Glenorchy are taking on Clarence Zebras at their, at their home. So good luck to the Glenorchy Knights there in the kickoff of their season. Uh, now over to the Garden State, mate, uh, at your way in Victoria. We, had a, we saw wonderful images at North Geelong with their uh, annual Festa and what looked like a bumper crowd on a fantastic uh, autumn day. Um, we had uh, lots of images and video, uh, visual footage to share. Uh, it was also used as a um, season kickoff. 
we can just touch down that audio taunch if possible. It's a bit too loud, is it? Yeah, mate. There we go. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, so as we can see, a good crowd there and the, and the players being presented from junior squads. Um, you know, the mini roos out there. You can see some some of the uh, stalwarts there at the club, the Desha brothers, uh, Tommy Palshuk, uh, Joey, uh, Joe Grigish doing his best on the mic there, always emceeing for the gigs. Well done, Joe, and the team at Harcourts in North Geelong. Um, but look, all, all in all, um, this has been going a few years now, and, and from from my perspective, this is the first time I've seen it from the outside looking in. And every every little bit of footage I saw, all, all I could, I was just in awe. I was just sitting back, smile ear to ear, thinking. Well, it, it, it's great to see it from this perspective as well. I would have loved to have been there in person, but to see the numbers swelling, continue to swell, everyone having fun, and it well, went on well and truly into the into the late hours of the night. And then later on in the evening, I saw footage of some of our youth team players, who many aren't from Croatian background, but joining yeah. in a call, joining in a call, mate. So, well, that's 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 the essence of our clubs, right? We're, we're we're showing people what we're about and and how we go about our lifestyle. And in just just embracing everyone who wants to be a part of it, mate. Uh, for a lot of lot of new players, um, this is and the senior presentation was later on that evening, as you mentioned. But um, for for a lot of players and families, this is their first experience of or first contact with a Croatian club or being part of a Croatian club. Um, and and look, it was it was a phenomenal um, kind of an experience for them. Um, it was. Um, really, look, you just see over there, I mean, um, there's there's just a lot of colour. There was folkloric groups, Dancing Lado from Geelong. You had Hrvatska Zora from Melbourne. Um, you had uh, Gola Guitara performing from Melbourne as well, Mio Chicha. Um, big shout out to Mio Chicha, by the way, the, um, the harmonica man. Uh, him and his lovely wife, he and his lovely wife, Lydia, are coming on board as business advertisers. Um, your business insurance, that will be coming as of next week. Though he was performing as well, so just so much color. Um, and look, I'd be—I think I'll, I'll get murdered if I don't mention that that those photos, the collage of photos, we can see a lot of the um, off-the-field stuff that was happening has been sent in by uh, Marcus Trupkovic and Vanessa Volarovic as well. So, um, yeah, well cheerio done, to, to those two. Good on them for uh, providing that. But yeah, look, um, we'll also see some family uh, the photos from the family day that Western Knights had during the week as well. Um, yeah. Or oh, sorry, last Sunday as well. So it's it's that time now, pre-season, where clubs are having their launches, they're having their open uh, registration days, and it is the absolute ideal opportunity to just to really put our culture, put um, you know everything that our club stands for, and and the history as well. Um, yeah. You know, um, I know my my little boy. We were in the um, club rooms there at North Geelong, and he's looked up, and you could see that a lot of proud. Where he looked up at the honour board, and he goes, "Oh, Tata, there's your name. Your name's up there." And I go, yeah, "Yeah, yes, it is. Yep, there you go." Yeah. So it's. It, I mean, we're talking third generation kids now. In some cases, fourth generation Australian Croatian. So um, we keep saying that um, the Croatian soccer clubs, Josip, uh, one of those last bastions of the Croatian community that's keeping the community alive. But it's through this that we're able to have, you know, priests come in and doing the blessing or the folkloric groups come in. We're having our, our food and, and um, um, liqueurs on sale and um, there's yep. Granny's Burek there as well. I mean, it was just yeah. a, a festa of Croatian communities and culture. That's what exactly. you want. Yeah, and um, everyone and everyone doing it willingly, right? So, and like to the team at, at North Geelong, uh, I'd, I'd sent a nice message over out on uh, social media on the weekend. As I said, I'm not living in Geelong at the moment. So mm. um, credit to all the people organising and getting involved because that looked like a really good event. So well done to everybody. Absolutely. All right, mate, let's move along now to on the field um, um, stuff that happened with regards to, you know, the games themselves and lots, yeah. lots happening so, this week. Look, coming up, Strathmore's got. Uh, I mean, North Geelong's got round one first mm -hmm. and foremost. They're um, as because we're on the topic there, but they've got Northcote City away, which will be the blockbuster of the week for MPL two. I think two teams that match up quite evenly uh, have two clubs with similar type of setups uh, that focus on their internal development. So that that'll be a belter of a game, I think, mate. Uh, and also coming up to round one for State League one and Strathmore in Brenton Santa Labs first coaching era. Um, 
yeah, they're facing Whittlesea United on Sunday. Uh, so a little bit out of out of whack because it's usually Saturdays for uh, State League One, but uh, they're on Sunday at Whittlesea United away. St Albans uh, unfortunately had their first loss uh, for the season, mate. They took on South Melbourne and um, uh, gallantly fought away, but uh, unfortunately with uh, the last of the dying minutes and I think tired legs and trying to push for a, uh, maybe an equaliser, they went down 4-1. Uh, a lot of fighting spirit there. Maybe the early minutes caught him out and the two quick goals in the 26th and 28th minute uh, set him back a little bit. Um, but they fought back well. They got a short break, though. They face uh, Bentley on Friday night uh, mm. away. So that'll be an enticing contest because Bentley has, has had a patchy start to the season and a Dynamo, I'm sure, will be looking to get back to winning ways and uh, remain in that fight for those top spots. Uh, Dandy City. Had a loss this week uh, against Green Gully away. Um, you know, look, they, they can hold their heads up high. Green Gully's a, a formidable customer to come up against uh, any any season, any week. Uh, and to go over to Gully and uh, go down 1-0 is nothing to be too embarrassed about. Uh, the they'll, they'll now have the chance to uh, set themselves up for Friday night's game against Eastern Lions. So... Um, Eastern Lions has had a patchy start to the season, had, had a few kind of uh, ugly results. Um but you know what happens when those teams on the bottom of the ladder yep. want to push themselves and you're coming up someone who's had a loss and looking for another win. A lot of things can go a bit kind of uh, funny. So uh, watch out for this game. It has it has the makings to be one of those indoor soccer games. You know, It's what they say, a six-pointer, isn't it? You know, when both yeah. those teams are sort of down the bottom of the ladder, um, a, a win against your direct um relegation opponent, if you like. Hopefully that's not going to be the case come season's end for, for Dandenong City. But indeed, this is a very, very important game so early in the season. Yeah. Um, Knights, back yeah. to winning weights. What, back what, to winning weights. Wait, wait. What a game. <laughs> there was so much spirit in this game. I was watching it on NPL TV. Yeah. Uh, look, they, they they found themselves in a, in a prickly situation, two goals down. But just kept fighting and fighting. And Gian Albano, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know whether it was the magic water, maybe some holy water down the taps in underneath in the back cave or something left over. But you know, they, they came out on fire and blasted three goals to take out the 3-2 the against Bentley. And now they're uh, back at home again this week in um, completing the Greek Islands tour uh, against Heidelberg. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, they've had they've had a bit of a journey around the Greek Isles. So uh, look, good luck to the Knights this week. Um, and... Uh, Look, the week after that, they get back to uh, more familiar territory and facing St. Albans. So we'll talk more about that next week, though. Now, the ACT pre um, NPL competition is still a little while off. Um, yeah. No doubt. Um, or both, both the O'Connor Knights and Canberra Croatia um, are, are really intensifying their pre-season campaigns. Yeah, yeah, they've just finishing off some camp, uh, some pre, pre what's it called, practice games. Uh, even their women's competition is uh, kicking off that same weekend as well. So yeah, watch out for Canberra, Croatia, the women's team. They're they're a, a red hot unit that one. Um, yeah. So uh, especially when it comes down to tourney time, you, everyone gets a chance to see them. They're always a, a tough customer. Uh, over in New South Wales, Hurstville Zaga kicked off their season with the seniors getting off to a, a one nil win against Camden Tigers. But the younger squads didn't have a, a, a day that they wanted to remember in, in any aspect in terms of their results. But look, it is round one. So uh, you chalk that away as the, the start of the season and you get the focus now on Uni New South Wales at home again at Penzhurst Park on Saturday. So good luck to Zagreb in, in their round two games. Mm -hmm. Further further north of, of Hurstville, we go to Sydney United out uh, further north and west. Um, Sydney United had a 3-2 win against uh, Cronulla. Uh, Sutherland Shark, Cronulla, or Southern Shark, Southern Sharks, as they are called. Um, that another gutsy performance there from Sydney United, uh, but th they now have to uh, turn their attention to their home game and Mount Druid Town Rangers. Now they're not a team many know about uh, in terms of who they are, where they've come from, but in the last two years, Mount Druid Town Rangers have really been a difficult customer. They they keep sort of getting into that middle table and becoming that sort of that. Uh, opponent that upsets you. So um, mm. good luck to Sydney United in that tough challenge this coming weekend. And then uh, further north, up to Newcastle, Newcastle, Croatia. Yeah, Newcastle, Croatia. Here we go. Competition time. It's time to get serious for Josh Popescu and the boys. So on Sunday, 20th of March at Pasadena Reserve, the 2 p.m. kickoff for their first entry into the Australia Cup. So good luck to the boys against Warners Bay FC. 
Um, I'm sure you'll do your community and your club proud, uh, regardless of the result. But let's let's just put our uh, focus and energy. We've done it in the past few weeks, Tonch, where we've put our energy and love yeah, and our karma, our karma behind a certain club. <laughs> this week, our karma's behind Newcastle, Croatia, for the two-one win. Oh yes, let's do it. Let's do it, Newcastle. Well, they can. Uh, they got to do it. Their first competitive match. Um, there you go. Sunday, Pasadena Reserve kickoff at two p.m. And that is the look. Last year we only had one club in the um the FFA Cup as it was known then, the final thirty-two, and that was the Gold Coast Knights. Honestly, at least half a dozen, half a dozen. Yeah. Is that a bit ambitious? Half a dozen Croatian clubs in the last thirty-two. Let's Why do not? it. I don't, I don't think that's ambitious. It's, it's definitely achievable, mate. With the amount of coverage we have around the country, why not? Absolutely. All right, mate. Last but not least, your new home state, Queensland. What's yeah, going Queensland. up there? So, well, uh, look, good news is that Brisbane Croatia's uh, facility is open for business for football again. Wonderful to see the community come out and help out with the cleanup. I'm sure there's still plenty of work uh, to be done. <coughs> Sorry. But uh, they, they're hosting the Johnny Message Cup, so that got put off during, during the storm period. So there's a bit of an exhibition game up first with some uh, uh, pre-match with the Brisbane Croatia Young Boys and the Sunny Side Croatia Old Boys uh, before the bigger game uh, with uh, Gold Coast Knights and uh, Brisbane Croatia themselves. So it all starts off at about 6.30. Uh, so get out there and support. It's a fundraiser for the club to help restore some building fixtures and furniture. So if you can, dig deep and, and, and help out the club for its uh, return to action. Excuse me, Tonch. And now and FQTV, we're, um, our digital home of football. So this has just been announced uh, today, actually, by Football Queensland. So there is a new platform um, where the, 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 the Queensland Premier um, NPL competition will be played, and that's um, fqtv.com.au. Uh, how are you? Yeah. You had a bit of a cough there. Yeah, that's right, mate. Just clear the throat a little bit. Thanks for that. Uh, in first team action for the Brisbane Knights, uh, hopefully they get a bit of coverage on the FQTV with this one. Uh, they'll play on Sunday away to New Farm United, so they get their league underway. And uh, also getting underway is Gold Coast Knights, uh, as well as their Message Cup uh, uh, obligations. They're also kicking off the NPL action, and they head up the road to the powerhouse Queensland Lions over in Richlands on Saturday, and it's an all-day affair with the junior NPLs and the senior all on the same day, mate. Lots happening. Well, mate, we have covered a lot of news. Um, we're going to have our first guest straight after the thing. Now, we're going to have our first guest, who, who's the president of Western Knights, Dean Zlendich. We're get, then going to take a little bit of a pause and look at what is happening overseas in Croatia um, and, indeed, BIH, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, lots happening over there as well. And then we're going to get back into our final guest for the evening. Um, he is the head of the juniors, Alan Tormich. He'll be joining us very, very shortly as well. Folks, don't go away. Um, here's a little bit of a sponsor from a Perth-based business, Slavicek Studio Architecture. Don't go away, folks. You're watching the Ozcrow Soccer Show. <coughs> Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode nine. And a big, big shout out to our major sponsors or our episode sponsors for tonight, the Western Knights Football Club. And it's an absolute pleasure now to bring onto the um onto the screen the president 
of the Western Knights themselves, Dean Zlendich. Dean, um, well, well so good afternoon to you over in WA. Good <laughs> evening to us. How are things over in Western Australia? Good. No, very good. Um, enjoying the restrictions. Not. <laughs> um, it's going well, mate. We're, we're getting our season started um, this weekend, so um, getting ready for, for a big season ahead. It's great to hear, and it's uh, also great to hear that um, your, your premier has opened up and uh, your people can move around and also have people come into the state as well, so uh, it's, it's a delight to see. Uh, welcome to the show, Dean, and it's uh, it, uh, congratulations on the, the presidency at the club. Uh, just uh, for the uninitiated about uh, Western Knights, did you, you want to give us a, a real elevator pitch style about the quick history of... Uh, Previously, North Perth, Croatia, now Western Knights. Yeah, look, um, born in 1968, so 53 years old. Um, yeah, had had um, obviously um, some some huge success uh, in in the uh, in the 80s and 90s um, in in the top flight of football here in WA. Um, haven't been able to reach those pinnacles other than you know in 2017 when we. Um, Won the uh, the cup here in WA and then represented um, uh, the state in the FFA Cup. You you were, you were talking earlier about um, yeah get, getting to the, the final, final 32. thirty two, which which we were able to do back in twenty seventeen, yeah. and that was a huge year for us. We we um, we won the cup and and finished on top of the league. So um, so look, it's it's a it's a club with a lot of history, um, like a lot of Croatian soccer clubs in Australia, and uh, we're really proud of that. So what happened? What take us back and, and what happened after twenty seventeen? Um, things just sort of seem to have gone a little bit oh, pear shaped or down south, as they say. Um, and now you're in State League One, which is the second tier competition over in WA. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and we were in twenty seventeen, don't you? So um, we we managed to 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 achieve that that goal. Um, wow! And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we bet we bet a few MPL clubs along the way. Um, and and then in the end, bet Sorrento, who was um, an NPL club, um, it, to win the cup, uh, and then flew over to the Gold Coast um, uh, to to participate in the final thirty two. So that was a, a huge experience for the club. Yeah, oh, look, since then we've we've still finished, you know, second or third, mm -hmm. um, and, and and you know, not not quite good enough to to finish on top. So that that's certainly the the goal for uh, for this year. It, it seems it seems like there's a there's a couple there's a divided history there from our, from our perspective I guess on the eastern seaboard looking over to the west is um you had that pre MPL history which as you alluded to uh, in the early moments you talked about it, that rich history of the eighties and nineties and I, I know for myself when you look at the Viesnik, you look at it and go gee Western Knights you know, North Perth Croatia yeah. they're sort of unbelievable they're constantly winning you see images of constantly holding trophies yeah. and photos up. Uh, and then um, that, that was like a pre-MPL, and now you had the post-MPL. Um, just just at that time when MPL came into WA, uh, do you have any kind of sense as to why they made a decision where Western Knights wasn't included? Oh, look, we we were – it was just bad timing for us. We, we finished at the bottom of the table um, the year before MPL come, come in. Um, yeah. So we were, we were going to get relegated anyway. Um, and then MPL – began and um we just haven't been able to get back in um it's as simple as that um yeah and and, and that's been very frustrating um obviously the main part of it is you need to finish on top yeah. um so yeah again that that's that was just unfortunate for us that in that season prior to npl coming into fruition um yeah. we, we finished on, uh, at the bottom of the ladder and is it hard because you're not in NPL? Is it hard to attract players from, you know, new recruits, for example, to come to the club? Um, or or is Western Knights still, you know, a, a, a fairly kind of a, an attractive destination for a lo lot of local players? Look, we, we are an attractive destination. You're, you're right, Tawanshi. Um, I guess we, we've got a, a strong history and, and I, guess, I guess a really good reputation um, amongst the fraternity here in WA, you know, um, it's important that you know, as as all Croatian clubs have, you know, we've got a good culture. Um, you know, the, the the players love the environment. You know, we we um, 
you know, we, we party hard and party, party strong and, and you know, <laughs> players like that as well. Um, but the Bill you know, Norge footage uh, well, pretty much summates that. <laughs> well, there you go, speaking of which. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was a, that was a big night. Um, we normally have it in the, in the big big hall, um, but we had to down downgrade it and, and have it in the bar because of, you know, the, the current restrictions. So yeah. um, that, that was a huge night. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's the way we all party, don't we, across Australia, us, us yeah. products. But, um, no, look, you know, so uh, we, we don't – it, we don't find it hard to bring players over to the club, but but you're right. Sometimes that just sort of that high level of quality, it's hard to bring to the club, especially that sort of younger age group, um, because you know they they're obviously their goal and their 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 main, I guess, objective is to play NPL. So mm, mm. yeah. Okay, aspirationally, is that somewhere the club wants to go? What are some of the oh. aim, aims? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in terms of infrastructure and player development pathways, do you feel like you've got that track set up? We do. Look, we're, we're, we're you know we have a really strong junior set up this year, and Alan will will talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so we've really put a lot of focus in in that area. Um, and over the last few years, we've been building. Um, so that that's been a main main sort of objective of ours. Um, infrastructure. Look, we we don't have the best facilities, but they are NPL compliant. So uh, we get audited every year by Football West, and and we're ready for for um, you know um, promotion to NPL um, yeah. in terms of our facilities. Uh, and, and look off off the field in terms of our structure and sponsorship and and financially, we're we're very strong. So. Um, Again, you, you know, as everyone knows, um, sometimes you just need that, that, that just that little bit of luck uh, and things to all sort of fall into place. And um, that happened in 2017. And, and again, since then, we've, we just haven't had that formula for, for, you know, there's always one little thing that probably didn't get us over the line. Um, but we feel like we're ready this year. Yeah. Right. We've seen um, in ACT in, in the Australian Capital Territory, um, one of our club guests, O'Connor Knights, who this year have um, uh, been promoted into the um, into the NPL. So they're joining Canberra, Croatia. Hopefully next year we'll see um, Western Knights joining another cl Croatian club over there, Gwalab, Croatia, in the top tier. But you mentioned the rich history of Western Knights. Now, some of the famous players that have started at, um, at Western Knights um, obviously, one of the most famous there, Sam Kerr, one of the greatest uh, female footballers on the planet um, at the Western Knights. Um, tell us a bit about her early days there at the club and also some of the other players that have come up through the ranks. Yeah, Sam Kerr's a great story and, and something that we talk about a lot, you know, obviously at functions and, and when we meet, you know, um, uh, you know, dignitaries. It, it, it's a huge story and something that we're really proud of. Um, she she played her juniors uh, with the Knights um, uh, in Mosman Park, where we're based at the moment, um, and, and obviously gone to gone on to huge things. She she mentions us she men mentions us in her book, um, which is great. So it's good good for us to get that um, that sort of promotion, I guess. Yeah. Um, look, famous players that have played at the Knights, you know, Robbie Dunn. Um, I was going to say, ex uh, uh, Melbourne Knights champion, Melbourne Croatia yeah. champion, Robbie Dunn, Correct. yeah. Correct. Um, you know, Kenny Bowden, who played for Australia in the uh -huh. 70s, um, played for the Knights. Um, you know, Ivan Javela, who, who who had a stint over at the Knights as well. Um, yep. Um, you know, and over at Melbourne Knights, I should say. Um, you know, he was our coach uh, for a few years there, so... Yeah, there's been some some. Did Tommy Tomic plays. come from Western Knights? Yes, he did. Yeah. He did. Yes, he's another one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Played for Glory and and for Melbourne Knights as well. Um, so yeah, some some great players over our history, no doubt about that. Is Tommy related to Alan? No, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dean, um, we, we we saw the we saw the uh, beer la Norch, which is which is obviously a big big thing, and and you know thankfully now it has been kind of brought back after a few years. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit with um, Alan about the uh, junior day that was held over the weekend as well. But um, how, we, we Josip and I briefly mentioned um, in the intro there um, how at our club North Geelong. Uh, Warriors, they had the Labor Day Festa over the weekend. And for a lot of new players and also old players who aren't Croatian, it's their first real 
a contact with Croatian culture. Um, how important the, is the, the the Western Knights, a Croatian club, to the Croatian community in, in Western Australia and more specifically in Perth? Yeah, very important. Look, um, you know, I, I touched on this at a, at a recent function. Um, you know, we had a we had a fish night a few weeks ago um, and we had over 200 people there. And, and I said to them, you know, uh, just... That, that everyone has a connection to this club, you know, whether whether they whether you were, were involved as a committee member or or a player or your or your nephew, niece, um, auntie, uncle, brother, sister, son or daughter, you know, there's a connection um, from from the entire community uh, with our club over our 53 year history. So it's important that everyone within our community realizes that, and they know that, you know, it's you know this is their club. Um, and and yeah, it's it's very important to the community, um, and we're really proud um, proud of that. Um, and, and look, and you made a good point earlier, Taunchy, about um, you know I was listening earlier about you know when you know new new kids that come to the club and and they get to sort of feel that that culture and that that you know they love the environment and and yeah, it's it's the same here. Um, you know, with, with a couple of the junior days we had on the weekend, um, obviously, you know, we have non-Croatian junior members um, and, and they love it. You know, the parents love it. They love it. And, um, you know, it's all about, for us, um, you know, ensuring that they stay on um, and, and play play all the way through for, for as long as they can. Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely, mate. Fantastic. Now, uh, speaking of uh, players, we, the first team had a good trot into the in the night series, unfortunately, going out in the semifinals uh, in their preparation. But nonetheless, a, a good uh, warm-up for the season uh, coming up pretty fast against Quinn FC round one. How, how are we shaping up in that first team environment? Very good, um, Josip. Very good. Look, yeah, the night series was, was a good hit out for the boys. Um, Adam Kostrenčić, our head coach, you know, tried a few few younger players as you do in in those preseason competitions, um, um, and and yeah, we, we had a good hit out. Um, look, the, the team looks really good. We've got a strong squad. Um, like I said, we feel like we we have the, the the players to to get us over the line this year. This Saturday we play um, in the uh, FFA Cup. Um, yeah, that's good timing. Bring up the. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the ad there, so um, all our right. three teams will be um, playing this Saturday in the in the FFA Cup against Fremantle City, who happens to be a, a, a state state league club as well uh, in in our division. So we're looking forward to that, and then round one the following week week against Queens. Um, so yeah, look, it, it's so far so good. Um, again. You know, we, we just need a little bit of luck, I, I, I feel. Um, last year, we, we just didn't have that, that formula right for, for, for one reason or another. Um, yeah. Um, again, yeah, we just we just think that, that on the field, we're, we're going to um, get the chocolates, mate. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. It's good to see Adam Kostanich still involved in the game. Like, he was a dogged performer for Fremantle during the tourneys that I remember during the sort of the early 2000s. But seeing him come off the park and coaching, uh, seeing his name in there, um, yeah, look, it's great great to see him involved. Uh, look, while we've got your attention, we had that splash page up before with the sponsors. Give your sponsors a plug, mate. Who, who do you want to make mention of? Oh, look, you know, our, our major sponsors, you know, DTMT and Argosi Minerals in particular, um, you know, they, they've been with us for, for many years. DTMT in particular, um, you know, they, they've been with us for, for over 20 years, um, a, a huge part of, of our club, you know, part of the family, part, part of the furniture, um, yep. and it helped out the club uh, for, for a very, very long time. Um, Agorsi Minerals, um, you know, Jerko Juvela, um, he, he's a former president of the club uh, and now, you know, in a, in a position where, where he can support the club financially, which is great. Um, you know, we, we have um, other sponsors um, as well. Romano Smash Repairs, Joe Negalic, um, who was our major sponsor in the 90s. Um, so he's back on board and has been for the last few years. Um, Cross Asia, um, a fresh produce um, exporter uh, based yep. in Geelong, funnily enough. Uh -huh. um, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. Siete Marlin. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and look, and and others that have that have that have continued to, to support us. You know, Perth Orthopedic, yeah. um, Luma Printing, a, a new sponsor that's come on board, Morley Nissan, um, and Five Star Finance. So it was another new sponsor that started this year. Oh, and then you know, and then you've got other Croatian uh, uh, backed businesses, Yurcevic Consulting, Matic yeah. Transport, um, Formstruct. So yeah, we're like. Like every club, you know, it's important these guys just just continue to keep keep absolutely. And, yeah, and well yeah, done, Tom, for putting their hand in their pocket and helping out. Well done. Yeah, yeah not easy, good. not easy in these tough times, but that's great yeah. to see. Dean, thank I've, you, thank you so much for joining I've us. Got I, one more, Coach, I got one more. Go on, go now, on. Go all, all things being equal, and the, the, <laughs> the COVID gods have gone have gone away on us. Are you going to be at the tourney this year? Oh, mate, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but the, the team, the team. We want look, the team back in again, we, we, yeah, look, we struggle to 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 get a team together and, and bring them across. Logistically, it's it's big yeah. for us coming from Perth. Yes. Um, yeah. It's it's not easy, but um, we'll, we'll try. We'll definitely try. We we had a team organised for last year, funnily enough. Um, yep. And then you know it didn't it didn't go ahead, unfortunately. But but now nah, look, yep. you know, I'll, I'll be there, and I'm sure a few of my. Um, Committee members and, and friends and, and family will will make the trip as well. Um, I've got I've got Kumovi over in Sydney, so you know it'd be good to go and see them as well. I think everyone's got well. Kumovi in Sydney, yeah. Huh? <laughs> when it comes to tourney time, we start knocking there'll, on there. There'll doors. be a lot of there'll be a lot of Kums for being used. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. A big shout out before we go uh, any further. Big shout out to two old friends of mine involved with the Western Knights, Alan Petzeltich. Who yeah, are, back was behind the scenes helping helping get together this um this um uh, episode and also Andrea Juvela can't forget Andrea Juvela who's become a bit of a Forrest Gump he just keeps on running and running and running and uh, um he's looking absolutely fantastic and trim and taut and terrific. Very uh, true. Yeah. Dean, all the very best for season twenty twenty two. We're hoping to see here some really really good news from um from Mosman Park and hopefully we can catch up um a little later in the year as well. I hope so, guys. Thanks again. Really appreciate uh, the time. And, uh, yeah, it's a great show. Well done. Good on you. Absolutely. That's uh, Dean Zlendich, the president of Western Nights over in Perth. Um, I love I love what we've started, um, Josip, from a, from a presenter's, producer's point of view, but also I'm sure the viewers are loving. To, you know, we, we get a little insight into all of these little, not just clubs, but Croatian communities. I mean, yeah, last week was right. Newcastle. This week it's um, Perth. Um, I'm just, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Loving it. And they all got their little small intricacies, differences uh, about them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Don't, don't go away, folks. When we return, we're going to take a trip a little bit overseas, see what is happening in Croatia. There is a lot happening, especially after the weekend. And then after that, hang tight because we've got our second guest from Western Knights, and that's um, Alan Tormich, head of the juniors. Don't go away, folks. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode nine, and a big shout out to our sponsors for tonight. The episode sponsor, Western Knights Soccer Club, who are also our club in focus. And um, Yossi, uh, we just heard from the president. Great to hear from the president. Um, but I think I don't know. Maybe we're a little bit biased, but all clubs, all clubs, the heart and soul of every club is the uh, are the juniors, aren't they? And our, yeah, of course. Our, our next guest is the head of the juniors at Western Knights, none other than Alan Tormich, who's coming to us direct from his car in a car park. The, the office. Alan, how are you? 
very well yourself. Thank you very much for having me tonight. And uh, yeah, in the car, my uh, son's doing a training session at the moment, so I'm just sitting in the car and um, being COVID safe, you could call it. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, that, so that's where the, that's where the parents that's where the parents should be anyway, right? You should be out yeah, yelling at the yeah, yeah, I deal with a little bit of that at uh, for the last couple of years at Western Ice, but um, yeah, we have a line and we have some cones. We keep them all back, but yeah, it's all part of the fun. Yeah, oh, practicing what you, you preach, Alan. Now, uh, mate, on the weekend just gone by, a huge weekend for um, for Western Knights in the junior section. Um, tell us a bit about what happened over the weekend, and uh, I think we might even have a little bit of footage while whilst you're whilst you're talking. Thank you. Uh, look, at the same time, it was um, it was a unique opportunity that we've had a bit of um, misleading information around the start of the season, so it actually fell perfectly in the end. We're actually originally going to start on May the first got brought forward to April the 10th and we've had um we had this always planned uh, for this day and we had a few things to factor in you know we're a small committee we all work hard together and um we had Bill and Norge we had the fish night at the start of February and we're thinking when was the best time to do this and the reality is we really just wanted to showcase our club we're a non-MPL club it is very hard to attract um players in that how do you say in that higher elite development they get to that age 13 yeah. 14 and yeah. we lose them and it's yeah. a very hard thing for our teenage group, uh, teenage teams as well. And also in Mosman Park, it's one of the more, how do you say, well-off areas in uh, Perth. And a lot of these kids go play private school leagues. So we lose. It's just a balancing act. So this year we went for a different approach and um, really focused. We've done a little bit of a term four program, done a skill development program. It's, it was called Technica. Um, had some guest speakers involved. And look, we've done it for a 10-week program. And that 10-week program was... More so just to, because soccer's turned 12 months a year. And we didn't want to lose people over the over that um, summer period. And it worked out for the, um, we had some guest speakers in. We had, uh, Ivan Javala spoke there. Darren Gaspar, ex-footballer, uh, AFL footballer, Richmond uh, Hall of Fame. You uh, yeah. call it. And we had, we wanted to give something back. And then the same, that sort of flowed on. We had some open kickabout sessions to keep it all together. By uh, start of March. Lo and behold, we're nearly set. When I say nearly set, we've got one more box to tick with one more team. Um, but at yep. the same time, we are set from, we've had a huge growth in the cluster space. So that's our five to seven-year-olds. And yeah. the registration days just tied all that in together. And um, it was, like you said, you talked about passion and passion and culture and who we are as a community. Um, my goal in coming into this is that to relive those glory days because some of my best years of my youth was in those early 90s at uh, Bruce the Oval and uh, watching, you know, watching the first game starting at 8 o'clock and leaving after 4 on a Sunday because, you know, our dads had drank the canteen dry and mum was still cooking trappy rolls at, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, and that yeah, was, you know, right. that's what we wanted to give back. And um, with this um, registration that happened, or sorry, family that happened, was a little bit downsized because of our uh, wait a while regime we've got here in uh, WA. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the same time, it was a big success, and um, all the right people chipped in that always help us. And um, in the end, it was just showcasing who we are. And yeah. um, we're in a bit of a reset as well. I think you guys mentioned that earlier at the start of the year. We'll come out a bit pretty raw, uh, raw and vulnerable with our um, junior junior parents last year at the presentation day, and says, "Look, we need to improve." And we're going to say this now. When you know, grab the bull by the horns, and we said, "Look." Um, we're going to endeavour to communicate better, to get better, and to help facilitate the growth of our club. Yeah, well, great. congratulations for stepping right. up into that role. It, it, it's a, it, it's a tough, it's a tough gig, right? And it, there's no sugarcoating it there, Alan. It's one, of, it's the hardest gig in the club is to be in that coordination of juniors. So first and foremost, congratulations to you on taking up that role. Do, do you feel like in terms of a, a, attracting, now that you've gone through this uh, bit of a period where you've tried to do things a little bit differently, do you feel like the attraction rate is is increasing and, and, and it's going to allow you to now develop your plan further? Yeah, 100%. So we've had we've had some recent um, spike in registrations where a lot of these local MPL clubs who have, um, you know, they've gone through this, they do like a money retention scheme where they charge deposits at the end of the year to guarantee spots in these monster squads. We've had um, a few players obviously not happy with the way they're getting treated like another number. We probably pride ourselves on being that boutique, smaller, you know, that feeling of a club. You're, you're yeah. a player. You're not a number. You, yeah. we're, you know, we treat you well. You know, what goes around comes around. You know, we, the help will come if you do the right thing. So do good. You do good, you get good. And um, yeah. that's something that I stand by. You show that bit of, extra, you know, 
um, love for the club and, you know, it, on and off the field. It's not just, you know, one thing I said, and I was talking to a few parents actually last night in the 13s group, and I was saying to them, this group of kids who have grown from picking up about four or five players from these MPL clubs nearby, these one of the monster clubs, um, I turn around and said, I go, you know, these 16 kids next year will have first dibs on the on the team next year. It win or lose the league. It doesn't matter. It, it's still the same to me. Is that we yeah, need to look yeah. at what we've got. And th these people here are the ones that are stuck by us through this three, four-year period when we're fighting against the, against the MPL. And, you know, th that's our core. And we've got to look after our core. And, you know, the word's got out. And um, we're trying to brand it a little bit better on um, social media as well. And there's probably been a little bit more junior content than, than most uh, pre-seasons. But... It, 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 we're just thinking of ways to be creative and innovative in our in our approach. Yeah, right. Finding out what works for you and it, yeah. what works for you, you, you work in, you work in that and make that the best level of what you what your best is. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And we got some we got some. You know, you talked about you said some names before. You've got some excellent people at the club with some excellent football brains and knowledge. And you know, Adam's coaching one of our 11s teams, a first team coach, and he's an under 11s coach. Ivan Javella is still his. Our, our kids play together. You got Andrea Girella coaching the nines, um, as fit as he is, the kids run just as hard. Um, <laughs> at the same time, you know, we've Rob got some, we've got some passionate and caring people. We've got Robbie Gaspar who's heading up our clusters. Robbie Gaspar is, uh, if you don't know, he's probably one of the, uh, one of the best WA's exports in soccer as well. He played in Singapore League in Indonesia, um, had a few injuries, curtailed his career late in his uh, in his early thirties. But his football brain, B license coach. Mm -hmm. uh, your wife ambassador, uh, sorry, FIFA ambassador for Indonesia. You know, like, wow, you know, use okay. that experience. You know, we've got some beautiful yeah, people oh, in the club. Um, we've got to, you know, all I'm here is like a facilitator. I'm the rah, 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 you could call it and make a lot of noise. And yeah. um, and it's it's a leadership approach. We've got a, a small job, junior subcommittee, some great helpers mm -hmm. around. And um, look, the reality is the growth, you know, all we can do is keep putting it in and we'll, we'll all turn around slowly in time. Now, obviously, success doesn't happen overnight. It's something that is built up over a, a certain amount of time. And you've mentioned some of the caliber of coaches. I mean, coaching is obviously, with when, whenever we talk junior football or a junior section of a club, the coaching is one of the most important things. Um, it's, it's your first year as head of the juniors. Have you set yourself a sort of a target that you want to be in, say, 12 months or 24 or even, you know, three years down the track? Have you giving yourself type of uh, goals in the short, medium and long term? Yeah, we've actually built a probably, a, a, sorry, in the last three to four years, we've built a stronger connection than ever into the 18s. So when we say it, we've had our teenage teams come through. Uh, one product of that, Dean won't talk about it because it is his son. One product that has been Johnny's Lendage, for example, um, you know, represented, re represented WA at the age of 14. And, you know, he worked his way up to, he debuted uh, two years ago in the first team, um, he's had a few injuries um, getting his way recently, but at the same time, we've seen we've seen the the pathways there. Uh, the mm -hmm. reality is, we want to see more of it, and we've got an excellent 15s team head up by um, you would know Gordano or Goggi, um, our president for the last 10 years. Her That's son's good, yeah. Up, yeah, her son's heading up the 15s at the moment. He's got a he's a mad so he he bleeds red, white, and blue, and um, loves our club probably as much as uh, any of us that have been here for a bit, a bit longer than all all of him. But um, at the same time, look. We hope for to offer that pathway. We're trying to bring the, the teams closer together. Obviously, yeah. Mawson Park, Kubel up, they're two separate areas, about 15, 20 minutes apart. So we bring the trainings down, we do open training sessions. We show these, we show these um, say non we're a non-MPL club, but our bond and our and our club is just as strong and the passion's mm -hmm. there. And we try to bridge that gap. Look, I'd love to see um, a couple of our talented 14, 15 year olds make their pathways through. I'd like to see the retention in this. The strength of our club right now is from that 8 to 12-year-old bracket. I'd like to yeah. see those teams roll forward. My concentration is on that group. Um, obviously, the clusters, Robbie and Undead, do a great job uh, breed, uh, uh, breeding, um, building them up um, into that 10, 11, 12-year-old space. And at the same time, we want to hold teams together. We want to hold relationships together. You know, a lot of these kids do the folklore with with um, with Zaga, for example. That's, you know, the, the, their relationships are built. You know, some some are doing external training. Some are putting the work in. It's, you know, all we can do is help facilitate that. We are just we are just the we're the equipment for them to succeed and help grow. Simple well, as that. Like as that. It's I like that analogy. We're the equipment for them to succeed, and it's so true. So, yeah. yeah, so well, and you know what? And we will teach them right from wrong. And I spoke to 
Um, I spoke to 36 players on Saturday in the 10s, 11s and 12s. And I turned around and I said to all of them, I go, you've got four life members up there. When you walk past there, go up there. I know it's not. He said, just say hello because these are the people and the respect that this is what our, our club demands. And at the same time, we had we had a visiting team. Ivan brought down his glory. Um, he's with the glory NPL 18s at the moment. And he brought every single one of those players through that club rooms, showed that wall of that leadership. And, he, and he's proud still even in a new semi-professional role to that where he's come from and where it is and bring it back to our club. You know what I mean? Mm. So, and in the pathways there, we had these Mosin Park kids there on a registration day seeing Perth Glory players in our reserve side walk around. You know, they were yeah. flabbergasted, you know. So yeah. it, was a, it was a fantastic weekend to showcase who we are and what we are. And like you said, yes, it is a tough role, but without the support, I've got the I've got a very good junior committee around me. The senior committee would collaborate and work very well. And to be honest, it's all it's all just forms of leadership. You know, the reality is, is that in life, you want to be a high performing team, you want to be a high performing club. You got to have some leaders, and and you know, you got to work together and collaborate and try the best possible result. That's great. And you got the look. You got a found, the foundation of a club that's been around for what, 53, 54 years, right? Uh, you, you're, you're breeding a culture within the club that shows respect for its, its foundation and also where it wants to go to. Um, it's a patience game, right? You, yep. you mentioned that sort of you know under 12s environment is where the probably the best part of the junior setup is right now in terms of development and talent. Word of advice from my own perspective: been there, mate. Uh, just be patient. Right, just be patient and encourage them to continue and develop as they go along. But also, on in saying that, with the players, with the coaches as well. Do you, you know you mentioned you know, with Gaspar and um, and Zivola as well? Uh, is there a sort of initiative to help the coaches continue to their continue their development pathway as well? One hundred percent. So we we've um, we invest in our coaches. So when I say if you don't invest in your people, you got nothing. So the the structure we have in place at the moment is that. You know, to take that next level to get your C license, your B license, and um, how it works is you do two two years of coaching. Um, I've done the last four, and I, I I'm patience level zero. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> and for my own son, uh, my sons, I've, I've said that for the last three years. I've got a shirt every year and said goodbye, but I keep coming back. So I, no one else. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the same time, but the pathways are all too these, familiar. Tales. Yeah, well, the pathways are there for these. For these. <laughs> For these licenses, so we offer them license coaching after two years. So you spend two years coaching, you give us your time, and we'll get we'll we'll, we'll take care of your licensing. So you upskill yeah. your people, you look after your yeah. people. Um, we're going to lean on, you know, we we have to get a more hands-on technical director down the space. We have one now, but we need a more hands-on one to give these to give it back to our coaches to lead our kids. And the reality is, I'm rah rah rah, and when I say that, I'm. I'll I'm a hard, I'll wear my heart on my sleeve and I'll work all day and night um, for any of these kids and any member of this club and try my best to um, help facilitate it. And that's and that's what it is, you know, from walking around at 4.30 on Sunday morning, setting up pitches, then to get in the kitchen to, you know, to get it done, you know, to see yeah. him rock up at 10 o'clock and present as a professional brand that we are in a, in a junior professional club. That's non-PL. Uh, but, you know, you treat every single kid exactly the same, you know, and that's part of life. Yeah. Awesome, mate. When does the actual junior season start for for the um, for the little tackers there at Western Knights? It's April the tenth, second week of school holidays here, so um, it's a unique. So we play for one week, then we go on break. No, sorry, we play for one week, and then we go on break for two <laughs> for school holidays, and we come back. <laughs> okay, yep. May the first. So look, I <laughs> I won't comment on football West, but anyway, I'll just leave it at that. And um, they've made that decision. <laughs> but what they've done is they've helped. They've helped because when people used to hear May the 1st, oh, we got plenty of time. And mm. the reality is registrations are coming through a little bit slower. They have actually springboarded us in the registration day. All of a sudden, things are coming in left, right and centre. So it has it has worked in that regard. Listen, Football Out West, Football West are just trying to um, celebrate their city Traven, and that's why they're doing their training. They're starting the season <laughs> off on the 10th of April, you know. Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> that, okay. I, I, I haven't, I've been sewing on that. I didn't realize that, but yeah, it makes sense as well. Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Uh, at least I'm seeing the football west anyway. So, yeah, I'm oh, waiting a while to look at the bright side of life. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, yeah, we, we've got to look on the bright side of life, either, otherwise, some things would just be you know, you'd be just crying about certain things. But, uh, mate, I'm uh, wishing you all the very best. As as Yossi said, it is a tough gig, head of the juniors. 
Um, but ultimately, when you see the smiles and the little kids and, um, you know, and, and some of the legacies that you leave behind, um, it's absolutely worth it. So, mate, yeah. wishing you all yeah. the very best in 2022 and beyond. Thank you very much for your time. Beyond, it's nice yeah, thanks for the invite. Up. I look forward to coming across <laughs> to the East sooner than later and I'll break absolutely. bread and drink some holy water with some junior... Uh, <laughs> junior... Uh, <laughs> Junior development ma uh, managers. Yeah, right? you know what? Well, each, each, um, each, each glass of Hollywood will make it more and more real. So we'll break bread. I look oh, forward yeah. to getting some advice. All part of being coaching, being professional, and understanding it as well yeah. as I'm always willing to learn. So thank you very much, and uh, gentlemen. It's been an excellent experience, and look forward to listening more to your show as well. Thank you very much. Good, good on you. Good on you. All the best, mate. You thank good you, on you, Alan. Uh, Alan Tormich, he's the head of the juniors there at uh, Western Knights. Yeah, good to his energy. He's phenomenal. Absolutely oh, fantastic. It. That is it's just absolutely legendary. Um, folks, yeah. don't go away. We're going to come back We're very, very shortly. We're going to talk about some of the stuff happening overseas. We're going to whiz through that very, very quickly because we have spent a lot of time um, exploring Western Knights, and it was awesome. But uh, don't go away, folks. We'll be right back very, very shortly. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Uh, let's turn our attention now to what's happening overseas, Josip. Um, well, in Croatia, it was the derby of all derbies. It was an incredible, incredible um, scene to see 33,000 in split at the Apollud. But on the field, it was probably a little bit of a, a derby to forget. Nil-nil between Hajduk and Dinamo goes... Uh, the, Probably favours Dinamo, not so much Hajduk. It's going to make this uh, last stanza of the season much more uh, enticing and exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's some of the other results there as well. Um, the big one. Now, when Hajduk and Dinamo lose points, guess what? You would have thought that second-placed Osijek and third-placed Rijeka would have capitalised, but no. Osijek drew against oh, Gorica, nil-nil. But they're buying the, into the drama. But the big surprise, <laughs> Josip, you know, Hrvatski Dragovoljac, who have got something Dragovoljac. like 10, 10 Rijeka players, ex-Rijeka players or thereabouts, whatever, they defeated yeah. the the, uh, the mother team, if you like, Rijeka. Um, yeah. That, like, that is incredible. That is an incredible result because Hrvatski Dragovoljac is on the bottom of the ladder, apart from that. But not only that, yeah. I mean, to defeat Rijeka... Do you think? Do you think that those players that have basically been either loaned out or have been um, so they've come from the Rijeka nest, if you like, and they've gone now out to Dragovoljac? Yep. Some of them are just young players wanting to um, prove themselves a senior level and weren't given that opportunity. I guess at Rijeka now they have at Dragovoljac. Were they there to impress Rijeka? Boy, did they! Oh, definitely, mate. You if you're a player that's been considered fringe and now I have to farm you out because you need more run in your legs and you're not you're not convincing me that you're going to be part of my first 11 or first 15 for that matter um and you get you get a chance to play for the bottom team there's going to be a sense from Rijeka that uh, we, we, we're going to do this with our eyes closed maybe yeah. a little bit of that arrogance factor as well 
and then catching you on the, on the hop. So uh, Drogovoy, that's <laughs> with their loaned out players, did an amazing job. Well, all it tells me that the uh, reservoir of talent in Croatia is unbelievable. There are just constantly young, talented players coming through the ranks. Um, and there's the picker. There's the um, next week's round. So there's going to be a round of matches this weekend. And then there's a week's break for the um, national team. Um, they'll be in action. But um, Hajduk split Lokomotiva, not an easy game for Hajduk. Lokomotiva, um, now I've been reading some of the newspaper reports in Croatia. A lot of pundits are saying Lokomotiva are probably playing the best football of all of the clubs at the moment um, since the resumption of, of the HNL, Prva HNL. Uh, Rijeka must beat Gorica. Osijek must beat Šibenik. Um, yep. And Dinamo, at the end of the day, they must beat Slavin. So, so for all of those top four teams, it's a must-win situation. They really, really have to. The toughest task right there on that weekend is uh, are Haydux and Dinamo's games. They're, yeah. they're, fa they're facing those teams uh, like Slavin Belupo who, uh, and Gorica who just like, know how to upset you. They, they've got this knack of doing it. Yeah. Turning attention to, now to the um, Druga Liga, the second division, um, the results there. I guess the, the pick of the bunch there is Varajdin, who are top of the table. They defeated Bielo Brdo 3-0. Bielo Brdo coming from the periphery of Osijek. And at one stage, yep. they even looked like they might be pr a promotion contenders. Uh, Dugopolje drew with Orient. Orient at one stage were um, hovering around the second spot. But Rudesh, Rudesh is the team now that's sort of like... Um, taken over, I guess, and, uh, yeah. um, as, as, as the um, co leading contender to the um, throne apart from Varajdin. And we'll just put the ladder up. Um, the second division is really interesting. Very well, exciting. Rudic has got a catch-up game coming up tomorrow they morning have? at midnight. Ag um, against against uh, Sibalia. So, uh, our club. Against our club. We're, gonna, we're, our club. we're, we're lifting them. We're going to put that. We're going to put that inspirational cloud out there as well. We want Sibalia to do well and escape that relegation zone. Now, remembering it's the bottom five clubs that get relegated this year because next yeah. year's competition is going to be, in fact, a, a, a I think a twelve team or um, a twelve team division. So it's going from sixteen to twelve teams. So it's going yeah. to be a very very streamlined second division next year. Um, and only one team, the top team, automatically gets through. So, um, yeah, overnight there's going to be that important, important clash. There you go, Rudesh taking on Sibalia. And then there's some games happening over the weekend. Um, Varajdin going to uh, the Maximir to take on Dinamo Zagreb, the second team. Rudesh yep. going to Osijek to take on Bielobrdo. So some uh, key, 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 key games happening there um, over the weekend. Uh, mate, quickly take us um, up to date with what is happening over the border in Bosnia i Herzegovina. Oh, look, the, the, the big result there was for Shiroki Brieg and Pustisha sharing the love together in a one all draw. So uh, you can't help but think there was a little bit of uh, brotherly love happening just to, <laughs> um, just to make sure that we're looking after each other there. Uh, Zinski continues on their winning ways, getting a nice, uh, comfortable 2 0 win over Sloboda Tuzla and just really cementing that top spot there. They, they look, uh, they look like the Himalayas, you're just too hard to climb. <laughs> so, it really, it comes down to a battle of who can take out the other European spots. I yep. think now we can probably say that Shuruki is probably just a, a step too far away from knocking on that door for a European spot. So uh, let, let's let's focus on Pulsusha staying away from that drop zone and um, yeah. keep, keep keeping them in the league. And hopefully we get another Croatian team joining in the Bosnian Premier League. Hundred percent. That would be the ideal scenario if that could happen. Uh, these are the fixtures coming up this weekend. All of those games are on Saturday, and they're all at um, what's that? It doesn't sound right. 10 o'clock at night. It can't be right. Can't possibly be right. Maybe yeah. that's <laughs> maybe that's playing, uh, our time at midday, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, something like that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Um, Zrinski Mostar at home to Rad Bielina. Uh, Posushi are away to Sarajevo, the Giants, FK Sarajevo. And yep. where's the other one? Shiroki and Tuzla. Shiroki and Shiroki home to. Sloboda Tuzla. Yeah. Um, so that is pretty much all the news that is happening um, overseas in Croatia. There is an interesting statistic that um, popped up during the week, and um, uh, this was on social media. Now, it's saying that Hayduk split in 12 home games this year has attracted 140,000 um, um, supporters through the gates, while the rest of the league in 122 games 
um, uh, an aggregate total has attracted an aggregate total of 165,000 fans. Amazing. That's amazing. It is. I yeah. mean, um, Hayduk Split has got such a, a drawing power. It's incredible. And look, just this weekend, just this week, they tipped over 63,000 members. Um, 63,000 members and something like 8,000 season ticket holders, which is, which is, you know, it's, it's highest it's had in the last 10 years or so. Um, we want the other clubs to do just as well. Also, I'm yeah. sure next year when they get a new, a new stadium, the brand spank a new, um, 12,000 seater stadium in Osiak, state of the art. Um, if Varaj didn't get into the league, they've got that potential to have three to 5,000 regularly at their game. So, we want to see. We want to see the HNL um, improve off the field as well, as much as it's done on the field. But uh, interesting. Yeah, look, imagine those there. those numbers there for Haydook too. Imagine if they didn't have that um, limitation of capacity as well at some of those. Uh, Absolutely, you know, that's another point. It, it wasn't like that all season, right? They had, yeah. they, had they still had limitations at some yeah. point. At, at one stage, they had forty percent capacity, but that has been thankfully reduced. Uh, Yossi Ben. Mate, that brings us to the end of our show. It's been a ripper show. Uh, next week, we're, we're turning our attention to uh, the big of uh, a Victorian derby, St. Albans Dynamo versus the Melbourne Knights, the big clash in NPL1. Uh, yeah. uh, St. Albans Dynamo will be our club in focus. And as we said, there's some huge things happening um, off the field with the Melbourne Knights, and we hope to get yeah. someone from the Knights. Look, we we did we did, we had St Albans on a few weeks back, and we we talked about a general sense in the club's development plan in terms of infrastructure and where yeah. the senior team is at. I think this is a good opportunity for us to hear about their 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 Mali Plavi, their their junior program, and where it's going because we can see the results in their NPL teams. They've they've turned their form around over the last couple of years. With, that's very visceral. Um, but let's hear from the people involved and what they've been up yeah. to and how they how they're going about it. And whereas once upon a time St Albans Dynamo was kind of like the, the poor brother to the Knights and, and to a lot of the other NPL clubs around that era, because there's, there's a real concentration of of clubs in that in that close oh, yeah. proximity. You've got Green Gully, five, you've got five kilometer radius, and you've got you know, amazing also. Avondale FC, you've got yeah, yeah heaps. Yeah. So it'll be great to find out more and more about what they are doing down at Churchill Reserve. Mate, like will notch, all the very best, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday night. Black or not, I look forward to it already. Yeah, keep running without.